allow me to add all the dignitaries that Lenora began the condolence somehow with. Uh, I too welcome you all. In fact, uh, with apologies to Professor Biman, all that I wanted to say has been said already. And it has been said rather brilliantly. The Professor Vijay Naidu's spent a coverage of the entire career of bridge is very illuminating. And I'm glad I did not uh, write a script to read because I wanted to say what I feel. And I thought, instead of going over the same facts again, I may just as well focus on his formative years, very early years, which he spent in Lambasa with me. The reference has already been made to the, the article he wrote, and Vijay expounded on it at, at great length. In that, he reflects on some, of, uh, some aspects of his formative years, first years in uh, Lambasa. We often forget when we look at the, the kind of work and the magnanimity of the work, the vast output that he made in the academic world, the 45 books and so many journal articles and speeches and addresses that he gave, and his own particular contribution in the Reeves Commission. When you look back and you look at all of that, we forget that he too, like very many of our people, came from very humble background. And I want to repeat that. For those young people in Fiji and abroad, that the comfort of a middle-class life is not a prerequisite to be a bridge lal of the sort it turned up. He was what he was, a rural person. And when he wrote that article for Island Business, which uh, Professor Vijay Naidu quoted at length, he sent me a draft and asked for my comments. I'll give you the comment at the end, because I was also quite emotional. And I sensed uh, a great sense of despair in that article. So I am the original recipient of that which got printed in the island business. But let me tell you what he thought about his own upbringing, instead of me saying he had a rural background. He says that my grandchildren asked me the same thing. How did you manage all this? Our grandchildren think they are positively hallucinating when I tell them that I was born in my parents' house. Now, very few of us would remember that. Some of us, most of us in Lambasa were all born in our parents' home. So I bear some similarities with, with Bridge. Like most village children of the time that I grew up with, without electricity, without running water, or paved roads, that we walked barefoot to school after completing our daily shows at home. No television, no internet, no iPads, no Instagram, no Facebook, no WhatsApp, and God knows what else. 
he writes. Yeah. Of course, the, his grandson keeps asking him questions and he writes about it. But what did you do? <laughs> he says, we may have started with nothing, but we achieved much. Went places beyond the imaginative grasp of the folks before us. We like to think that we were the original lucky generations of Fijians. The world was then opening up. Pan Am was landed in Nandi. Oriana was coming here, tourists were coming. But we never imagined that we would too one day become tourists in their land. Through his schooling in high school, and then to university, Professor Vijay Naidu spoke very eloquently about the way he perceived the university. He thought that was a great opening thing. Led to a lot of uh, development and growth and allowed an interaction with just not ethnic Fijians but with Pacific Islanders for the first time. It is for his early years, he regretted that the Fiji education system did not allow a mixture of uh, races in schools, or it didn't just grow that way. He was, uh, he felt deprived of that. He writes about that segregation. One deeply regrettable aspect of education during our time was its effective ethnic segregation. Fijian boys went straight to Fijian schools. Most of them landed at Queen Victoria School or at Kandavu Lebu School. And Ethiopian girls went to Andy Dakambal School in Saweni. And most Indo Fijians, including even the government sponsored Lambasa Secondary, Marist was an exception. But not everyone could afford coming to Marist Brothers in those days. The barriers, of course, were breached much later. It is no wonder that Fiji has faltered so much in the post-colonial journey. I certainly hope that racially segregated education in Fiji is now firmly in Fiji's past. I think it is in that context that he praises the existence of the University of South Pacific. It was there that he really grew up. It was there that he claims to have interacted with all kinds of people. It was there that his growth and his personality expanded and the whole world came into him. He said some very nice words about teachers and uh, Professor Naidu read parts of that. And I think there are lots of teachers on their holidays watching at home would know that. And let me repeat that bit that Professor Vijay said to address those teachers. Teachers for us at that time yes, were figures of great authority Exemplars of correct conduct, always respectfully addressed formally. They took their profession seriously, rather than as a spring, stepping stone for a career elsewhere in the civil service or anywhere else. 
They pushed us hard. And some of the examples, he says, influenced his own teaching and formed the cornerstone of an award which he recently received at ANU, being the top supervisor of the university. So teachers, I'm glad to see a number of you here. And I thought I had recognized the presence of the General Secretary of the Fiji Teachers Union, Agni Deo Singh. And through him, a number of his other colleagues, now fully behind and supportive of this program, this condolence sabha, organized by the National Federation Party. I hope this relationship will continue to exist and find fruition elsewhere later in 2022. Now, I had a very personal relationship with Bridge. I was Bridge's history teacher in the formative years at Lombasa College. And I'll soon read to you an account of his choice. Why did he choose history as a subject? Of course, he says a lot of good things about me. And that's one of the reasons I want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> but through me, he's talking to a whole lot of other teachers in the country. I recently have finished a book on the history of the Fiji Teachers Union. And uh, through our contacts, I asked him if he'd be glad to write a forward. And he did very happily and willingly. This is what he says. I won't read you the whole thing. You have to buy the book at some stage <laughs> when it comes out. He says, we will remember favorite teachers of our youthful years. Folks committed to the profession of disseminating knowledge who went beyond the call of duty and inspired by the example They opened windows which enabled us to see further than they could see. Our appreciation of the immense contribution grows and grows ever more with the years. And here's the nice words. One such teacher for me was the author of this book. Mr. Christian. <laughs> and in brackets he says, always Mr. Dutt, sometimes KD behind his back. <laughs> I remember vividly the day he came to our Form 5 class. History was an optional subject those days. We keep forgetting, Bridge was a straight science student. He was a science student, not an art student. But uh, the children doing, uh, not doing history would walk out and go and do private studies. So when I walked into his class, he writes, uh, writes it this way. I remember vividly the day he came to our Form 5C class in 1969 at Lambasa Secondary and promptly asking those not taking history to please leave the classroom for that teaching period. I was a straight science student, but I stayed for reasons I still do not fully understand. There was something about this bearded teacher, visibly thinning, now thin altogether. <laughs> <laughs> visibly thinning.
confident and charismatic that I found strangely mesmerizing. I'm so glad I stayed back. For the next two years, Krishna introduced us to, and he talks about all the history classes and things that they did. The details of what we learned have gone now. But the wonderment of learning and understanding human motivation through time and space, the follies of humankind, the eventual tri triumph of truth over evil have remained. Krishna's teaching determined my future. I have re remained a student of history all my life. Krishna was my teacher. This is the punchline. Krishna was my teacher. But I have no doubt there were hundreds if not thousands like him throughout Fiji who made a difference and whose life stories lie treasured in the memories of their grateful students. So he said so much for teachers. So Vijay, covered those aspects of his uh, life, remaining life at USP, beautifully. There's one other incident, small incident, which I'd like to talk about. He's still ta talking about, still talking about my car, my class, and perhaps explains the background to his connection with Theo McDonald. Incidentally, I also in those days used to visit his office. I still remember the day in 1969 when Krishna came to our class with a placard. We used to do these kind of things as teachers. And I'm glad I did because it registered in his mind. He remembered it with a placard around his neck, with the opening words of the Communist Manifesto. <laughs> Workers of the world unite. <laughs> you have nothing to lose but your chains. These fighting words, at that time, in that place, Lambasa, <laughs> at the edge of everything, seems incongruous but it speaks eloquently about the kind of passionate teacher he was. In light of his career trajectory, I wonder if Karl Marx, as another famous declaration, had lodged in his mind. And this one too, I must read for the philosophers at the university who sit idly these days <laughs> and do very little on the streets. <laughs> He said, the philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. One of his, one of the things we started, I don't want to say I started, La Massa College, was, which was unthinkable those days, was to establish a student council. He writes about that as well. And he was the first general secretary, first general secretary ever of the student council. I think he is probably his first position like that. And I, as the teacher helping them to organize a student council, uh, sat through their first meeting. And the debate at that student council was whether or not students should be allowed to wear flip-flops to school. <laughs> In Labasa, there was a very common practice to wear flip-flops because uh, people couldn't afford anything else. But that was Bridge Lau. I've had many other students, some are still. Office, some, are, some of them are still working very hard in public and in private. I see Richard Naidu sitting there as well. But he came to me at Silver Grammar School. At Lamasa College, in his cohort, in his group, 
Today, I can f count at least five professors in different fields throughout the world. And through them, we live as well. I, uh, I insisted that the yeah, Lamasa College, that Bridge should get the history prize for the school. The single subject prizes were given to Form 6 students because they were leaving. But I was also teaching a Form 6 class, so I had a good idea and could compare. And in the staff meeting, I insisted that Bridge should get the school's history prize, although he came from Form 5. But it's, of course, I was a lone, lone voice, and uh, it didn't carry through. So I gave him a special prize, Krishna that prize for history. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't refuse that. And I remember the book I had ordered for him, L.C.B. Siemens, from Vienna to Versailles. He showed me that when I once visited him in Canberra. He showed me another thing when I visited him in Canberra. And I say, I don't want to keep talking about my connections with him and how we kept meeting throughout life. Throughout life. In Canberra, he showed me this prize. And he showed me his report, which I had written in, when he was in Form 5. The single line which is allowed to the history teacher to fill in in a massive report. And in that line, I had written, Bridge has a great potential in this subject area. And he was so, so happy that teachers could actually see ahead. It was not about seeing ahead, it was about bridge. You could recognize that very early. And I wanted him to continue with history and not to fall back to any of his other science subjects because that was the pressure on children in Lombasa. You go and do science and become engineers, and mathematicians, and anything related, even water mechanics, it was fine because it dealt with maths and other things. Interesting. But let me draw my thoughts from the early years to, to back to that article again. I don't know, Vijay, whether you noticed that in the island business, but I did when I got his first copy. A premonition of an impending tragedy, an impending death. And uh, it disturbed me. It disturbed me then. It still disturbs me every time I read it. Because if you... I, I have not read the island business column, but in the original that he sent me, the first line of that article reads three scores, just in case you have forgotten, a score is 20, three scores is, <laughs> takes you to 60. Three scores and 10 is the age allotted to humans. The good book tells us, he's obviously referring to the Bible. By that measure, my time is or will soon be up. He sent that to me this year. Though modern medicines sometimes plays God with humans and blurs the boundaries between life and death. I'm a late Second World War Fijian, now marching lock, stock and barrel into niggling dotage. Ours has been an improbable journey, one step at a time, could have been the motto of our generation. I want to look at one other area. One other bit that he said, and uh, in this, he says, towards the end, 
and I think Vijay referred to this, about the beauty of growing up in Fiji at that time, because he's talking about the Fiji that made him. Then he talks about the country of cacophonous voices, sometimes discordant even, but that was a condition for a vibrant democratic society. The parliament was not a bullpit for belligerent politicians with insufferable egos and overwhelming ambition, but the people's house to discuss matters with dignity and decorum. And yes, a bit of pungent humor. That is the past which I was a part of, mostly as a bystander and occasionally as a minor participant. That past for me cannot be erased just because it is inconvenient to the present. I am conscious of the biblical injunction, injunction about age, but I ask with T.S. Eliot, where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? So there was a, a sense of despair. A, a tremendous contribution was made by John Apted on his role on the Reeves Commission. I don't want to go back on that. But he was a meticulous worker, as John Epton recognized. He wouldn't let a single sentence go past without his scrutiny. Acted more than the teacher that I was. I'm glad he was not marking my assignments because he'll be full of red marks and red inks. <laughs> but look, I sent him I sent him a transcript of the speech which uh, Honorable Rambuka made at the founding opening of his People's Alliance Conference. And said to him that I think here is a hand being extended to the rest of Fiji. And it is up to us which way we respond. And Bridge replied in a very sh short, and this was a very recent one, a very short script in which he said, thanks for sending this address. It was a remarkable speech considering the circumstances. We were touched by his mention of our case by name. SLR, Sitibeni Rambuka, is saying, carries the hope of a new Fiji. I could not agree more with him, sir. With Bridge is my hope as well. There can be no sadder event for a teacher to have lost his student while he's still alive. It's like a father losing a son. My time should have been up well beyond, well before. But I carry on, struggling as I do, joining new forces, aligning with new people, talking to new groups of people, to making them aware, conscious, not just about the injustices done to Bridgelal by banning him from this country, but for the rape of democracy which has gone on. And hopefully, the Lord will grant me that day that I'll see some of you, you particularly, back as leader of this country, joining hands with Professor Biman and showing a new path to the people. I'm going to end this because I'm getting emotional myself. And very seldom that happens to me. But I want to conclude by 
by reading bits of pieces that I wrote back to him when I saw that article and when I sensed that despair in bridge. Because like somebody else said, that Bridge was just not a historian, he was a creative writer. And he still sits tall, tells you much more about himself. I was given 10 minutes, my apologies for taking an extra minute. I said to him, your article allows an opportunity for people like me to reflect on my own. And when a reader through someone else's writing is able to reflect on his own life, that's a measure of a great piece of writing. And I said, that is the work of a great piece. Not all writings are able to do that. So please continue writing. Physical life in one place does not take away the pleasures of reminiscing the delight of another, no matter where you are located. In fact, imagination often grants us a much more vivid and real experience of life and living, whatever the physical location, wherever you are. Tambia and Fiji lives in you, and we are blessed to live the same through you. Through your articles, through your writings, we relive our past and sh share the joy of the present. So long as your works are alive, you remain living. And through you, we continue to share the joys of the past and the present. Antame, I pray for the Lord to pray for you. That they will be able to pray for you. उनके परिवार वालों को धैर्य मिले एंड पद्मा एंड द चिल्ड्रन फ्रेंड्स इन ब्रिस्बेन इन कैनबरा एज वेल इनफैक्ट इन ऑल ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड फिजी इन पर्टिकुलर विल गेट स्ट्रेंथ टू बेयर द ह्यूज लॉस मे गॉड ब्लेस यू ऑल थैंक यू